how do we you know pain. prevent joint pain yeah. so if we can keep this muscle strong hum apni mastopesiyon ko sudrid rakhenge to jo jor jo zor pura jor ke andar aana hai the pressure which is going to come on walking or working while we are doing things which is going to transmit to the the joint will be partially taken up by the muscles hello friends and greetings from vlcc and a very good morning to all of you i am dr anju khai vice president and head preventive healthcare at vlcc your host for the session today and uh, you know what today we will understand what joint pain is why it is caused how to prevent it and how to cure it our expert panel includes today padma shri dr yash kulati india's leading orthopedic surgeon eminent cardiologist dr dheeraj bhatia and nutrition expert dr deepthi verma each of whom we will meet shortly yes so we will see see with 310 locations in 143 cities across 12 countries in south asia southeast asia gcc region and east africa is a leader in uh, beauty and wellness arena and our wellness program is recommended by ima the indian medical association so of course this today is actually the 10th webinar in our monthly webinar series and uh, this is our educational contribution to basic wellness through quality information and uh, healthy lifestyle choices so on to our topic for today but a few facts to get us all warmed up so our bones actually they they fit like a massive jigsaw puzzle and rely on a variety of muscles to stay aligned and move uh, the joints starting from neck and jaw down to the toes and they support the rest of our organs and tissues so actually uh, you know what bones store about 99% of calcium in our body and are composed also about 25% of water so adults uh, you'll be amazed we have 206 bones in fact the newborn has 300 almost 100 more so where do uh, these bones disappear well they fuse together as we grow leaving us with 206 as adults and guess what 52 of these bones are in our feet and our hands have the most bones 54 of them the femur the thigh bone is the longest and the strongest bone of our skeleton while the smallest and the lightest bone is the stepes in the middle ear so we have a whole range each designed specifically for its function and uh, purpose and uh, also you know what while men and women skeletons they look almost alike the shape size and angle of women's pelvis are uh, especially geared for childbirth you know what we'll be talking about joints and joints are the place where two bones meet or connect some joints move some don't and uh, they're all in many shapes and sizes depending on the kind of movement needed from ball and socket joint to ellipsoidal joints to gliding joints to hinge joints and our biggest joint is the knee so dr gulati will tell us much more about them uh, so very soon and uh, guess what what happens is as long as we are healthy we don't even think about these joints and we notice them only when uh, they draw our attention when we have the pain and we say ouch that hurts yeah so pain is our body's signal to us that something is not okay it must never be ignored and uh, so as we grow older we find more and more of our joints beginning to complain but it needn't be so so with care of our bones and joints which are designed to last for uh, last us for our lifetime uh, only thing is that our lifestyles and habits often let us down so all this is the subject for today and uh, yes of course you have been sharing your questions with us uh, since you registered and now i will invite our panel experts to address them so let's get started i am really delighted to welcome and introduce to you our first panelist for today dr dheeraj patia 
Dr. Bhatia has over 35 years of clinical consultancy practice in New Delhi and has been a senior consultant cardiologist with Fortis Escorts Heart Institute and Research Center and also Max Super Speciality Delhi. And he has been honored twice by DMA and IMA as the Doctor of Excellence awardee. Uh, actually, he's also been part of the core medical research team, which had uh, laid down guidelines for defining the management of obesity and PCOS in Asians. And of course, he has been the senior medical advisor to VLCC for the last 20 years. So good morning, Dr. Bhatia, and welcome to the webinar. And thank you so much for joining us today. Very, very good morning to you, Dr. Anju, and thanks for the introduction. And good morning to all the viewers uh, who have joined us uh, this Sunday morning and taken out your precious time. I hope uh, this will be useful to you, the webinar. You, as Dr. Anju said, you've got a very eminent speaker. He's going to be our chief guest today, uh, chief speaker. And I think let's set the ball rolling. So Dr. Anju, yes, what's the yeah. first question? Uh, which I think the viewers... Uh, uh, Dr. Bhatia, you've been the physician. Uh, I, I must ask you this. What is the like commonest cause of joint pains with which patients approach their physicians? And also, what is the most common cause of joint pains with which they, patients goes, uh, they go to orthopedic specialists? Yeah, that's interesting, actually. So uh, we get mostly people, you know, coming in with uh, problems of gouty arthritis. And... Uh, they, of course, get more of uh, osteoarthritis uh, of the knee. So there's a certain difference in, in, in the epidemiology here. So we see, uh, you know, because gout is more uh, common in males, so we and more at a younger age group. Uh, while for them, they see more females and uh, more at an older age group. But uh, any joint can be involved. And, uh, of course, we in VLCC see a lot of patients with osteoarthritis knees as well. Uh, because of the it's a weight bearing joint and people who are overweight uh, there's a problem there uh, similarly like if you're overweight there's a problem with uh, your gout you know uh, that's one of the triggers so we can discuss that as we go along right yeah. right so dr bhatia you mentioned the gout t arthritis so what exactly is gout and what are the common causes and symptoms and uh, moreover uh, besides the joints are there any other organs which get involved in this? Because we get many, uh, uh, many people suffering from this, especially in VLCC also. So uh, we would really like to know what is all about gout. So gout basically, uh, <clears throat> let's start from the beginning, you know, like what really happens. It's two, you know, which is, there's certain myths which I want to clear today. Uh, one myth was that it's all purines, purine diet, purine diet. Second myth was, uh, that it is high protein diet. So you'll be surprised now with research is showing that it's not really uh, purines. And a lot of people have another misconception that they feel that purines and proteins are the same thing. So purines are not proteins. You know, they might be in proteins, that's different, and they plant purines as well. Uh, but purines, for years we thought, you know, okay, give a low purine diet and that's the main cause. But now, because the, what happens is purines, basically, they convert into uric acid. And uric acid then converts into urate. Now, urate is a crystal uh, which gets precipitated if there's too much or if the blood is acidic. So it gets precipitated in various joints. Now, to think that, you know, a crystal has gone into your joint and, you know, one tends to uh, you know, imagine that is a very sharp glass-like crystal and that's cutting your joint. That's not really true. So basically what it is, it's an immunological reaction. So, so far, so good. Purine converts definitely into uric acid. Uric acid converts into urate. And urate converts into these crystals If you know, for various reasons. They can be a genetic predisposition or they can be, the body can be very acidic. So that's why they say alkaline is good for most cases. So anyway, so it's not basically these crystals which are cutting your joint. So it's an immunological reaction the immune reaction to these crystals. So the immune system is very smart. It tags these crystals with IgG. IgG is a, you know, it's a component of the immune system, immunoglobulin. So that tags it. So therefore, then the neutrophils come, which is the army, you know, like part of the WBC family. So your WBC counts. So the neutrophils come and macrophages because they want to engulf this. 
And when they start doing this, there's inflammation. Then the cytokines come, which are inflammatory uh, products. So therefore, it is an inflammatory uh, reaction to these crystals there in the joint. And that's what is really happening. So, um, the, you know, so the pain, the pain is very excruciating. It can come suddenly. Uh, it comes in the, in the night usually. Uh, it comes why in the night? Because usually most people tend to have more you know, heavier dinner at night, maybe more of purins and maybe more of uh, alcohol. Among the alcohol, the worst is beer. Uh, maybe because xylitol, a kind of sugar is there and that causes it. Maybe also because you get more dehydrated because dehydration also leads to uh, crystallization you know, formation. So it could be, but the pain is excruciating, it's cutting. They say it's worse than cardiac pain also. And usually it happens in the great toe. It can affect any joint, but most of the time in the great toe. A very interesting question is, everybody says, why the great toe? And why in the fingers, you know? So this is usually because the periphery is the coldest. So for precipitation of these crystals, they, you know, it's when it's cold, uh, then it precipitates more there. So that's the reason why the toe gets affected and why uh, you get these peripheral joints uh, of the fingers which get affected. And the second thing which you find is uh, deposition of crystals as they increase a mound forms there, uh, like a small hillock. And that is called, uh, you know, uh, tophi. That's called tophi. So you get these urid tophis. So, the, you know, any other question you would like to ask or what they're asking? But uh, I think that's Dr. the basic uh, Yes, physiology. so very nicely put. So like Dr. Bhatti said, we eat uh, in the food. We have some food articles, which even Dr. Deepthi would be elaborating, uh, which has purines in them and they get converted into uric acid and urate and get deposited in our joints. And then there is a immunological reaction to which... Uh, because of which there is inflammation, pain, etc. So, Dr. Bhatia, are there, uh, you said uh, big toe and peripheral joints are affected. Are there any organs also which get affected? or it's So, only... one, one organ which plays a huge role. Now, I was going to come to this, you know, because the purine theory is not very strong today. There are a lot of people who, who are not on a high purine diet and yet they get gout. And yet you'll have, you know, you know, you'll have top nutritionists like Dr. Dipti, or you'll have physicians telling them, uh, cut down your purines, and you find the purines are really cut down, and yet they go in for gout attacks. So now the question is, what is really happening? So the, the other source which they found now is high carbs, especially refined carbs is a very big source because insulin is released, released. Now, when insulin is released, what happens is uric acid from the kidney. Now, that answers your question, which are the organs? So uric acid from the kidney is not excreted out. So uric acid stays inside. So therefore, another very important thing is you cut down these refined carbohydrates and do things to bring your insulin levels down, which is also losing weight. That is a very important part. Second very important part is that you alkaline your, your body and your urine. And that is what you use uh, potassium citrate, you know. Actually, the ideal is a very simple homemade remedy is sodium bicarb. Sodium bicarb, one eighth. You can't start with much, just one eighth of a teaspoon. You start once a day, then after some time, you make it twice a day. Then if it's very bad, you make it three times a day. Soda bicarb, but some people are sodium sensitive, like the patients with hypertension. Then you can't give them soda bicarb. Then potassium citrate is very good. You get potassium citrate in the market as stone one. The syrup is called S-T-O-N. Not S-T-O-N-E, S-T-O-N-1. And you start with one teaspoon and then you gradually build it up under uh, the directions of your physician. And that makes your, uh, your urine alkaline. And that really helps a acute attack. So, you know, you have medicines like allopurinol and you have new medicines like febexostat. Uh, the, these don't allow uh, purines to convert into uh, uric acid uh, because they inhibit enzymes. But, and you know, in acute attacks, you give Colchi scene, but let's not go there. Let's do something which the public will be interested in. One is alkaline your urine. And that, like I said, soda bicarb, if you're sodium sensitive, then you go for potassium citrate, which is like in stone one, and you get uh, very good results. Uh, even in acute attack, it helps. In chronic situations, also it helps. Uh, another thing which I want to tell all the viewers, a lot of patients come to me and tell me, uh, Dr. Saab, you're saying this is gout but my uric acid is normal. So 50% of patients with gout will have normal uric acid. Please take this home. 
So having a normal uric acid does not mean that this is not a gout attack. It is clinical diagnosis also. And then there's a confusion between gout and pseudogout. So gout, there is uric crystals. Pseudogout, there are calcium complex crystals. There's a slight difference. Usually, uh, pseudogout is more in other joints and more rare in the toe and the fingers. You know, it's more in bigger joints. Then to diagnose it, there are, of course, X-rays and MRI. But finally, it'd be people like Dr. Yash Kurati who would put a very fine needle inside and take out the synovial fluid. And there, under polarized light, you can tell whether it's a calcium or a uh, urate crystal. You can tell the difference. Because the management of both is, to is totally different. You don't want to start giving allopurinol and all these other new medicines uh, in cases of uh, pseudogout. So, you know, the management can be different because the causes can be different. So it's not that simple. It's a, actually, I always say that gout, a lot of people think it's very simple, straightforward, but it's not. It's a little complicated. You need a good physician to take care of it. Otherwise, you, you could be in serious trouble. But there are certain medicines also which precipitate it. And doctors forget about that. Uh, one is like uh, blood pressure medicine, hydrochlorothiazide, HCT. So that causes a lot of, uh, again, uric acid, it retains. Uh, similarly, niacin, niacin, which you use for triglycerides, that is also notorious for causing a problem. Yeah, I think I've taken my time, so I must stop here. Uh, and I want to give the, the, the uh, you know, the, the next speaker, because he, he, he's a star speaker and we, we need to, you know, uh, you know yeah. move to him Thank now, you. straight Thank away. Thank you so much, Dr. Party. I also just wanted to confirm, is the uh, layman's person, is this the Gathi, Gathia, uh, that's what we say, that I'm suffering from Gathia, is that the same as gout or what is it? It's the same. <laughs> it's a very broad term, actually. Like I said, you, <laughs> okay. know, you have to really... Uh, get into <laughs> yeah, right. you, could, you could say that okay. if the if, if the toe is involved then you you know then. Okay. but the toe is, is actually the key but you can have many other joints as well right no right. no doubt no no doubt about that right. but right. lifestyle changes cutting alcohol making right. your urine alkaline these are some things you know which people forget about it adds big time in long term management of uh, gout very important okay. to do these things thank you thank you so much dr bhatia for laying the foundation for today's discussion mm -hmm. and so now i'm very pleased to introduce our special guest on the panel padma shri dr yash kulati is uh, actually senior consultant joint replacement sports and spine orthopedic surgery at apollo hospital delhi He's also advisor, orthopedics, Apollo Group of Hospitals, and coordinator, joint replacement, and FNB, fellow of National Board, uh, joint replacement, and has held uh, senior positions at RML Hospital and VLK Hospital Delhi. And uh, of course, he was awarded the prestigious uh, Dr. B.C. Roy National Medical Award by the President of India in 2016. So he has been honorary surgeon to President of India. And interestingly, uh, Dr. Gulati has provided medical cover for the cricket test matches, one day international matches and the IPL that's going on in Delhi and uh, doctor in charge during the World Cup hockey tournament and the Commonwealth Games. Very interesting. So he's one of the few surgeons performing half knee replacement or partial knee ortho arthroplasty and uh, popularized gyroscope based navigation for knee replacement in India, which we shall be talking about shortly. So welcome, Dr. Yash Gulati. It's our honor to have you with us today. Thank you very much. You know, it's very nice to be on VLCC program. And I have been associated with VLCC for decades now. And uh, it's, it's an honor to be there. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time today. So let me start uh, with our first question, which is so fundamental. Why, why do joints pain? You see, why do children cry? Because there's something wrong that's going on or they're hungry or something is hurting them. So let's understand what the joint is made of. See, most of the major joints we talk of, not we'll, as you yourself said, there are many types of joints. So we'll confine ourselves to the major joints, which kind of uh, hurt most. Uh, they are what is known as a synovial joint, and they are made up of at least two bones, sometimes three. For example, in knee, there are three bones, kneecap, 
femur and tibia and hip is uh, socket and the femur bone of the head and these obviously you can imagine that for i mean if a man lives 80 years 85 90 100 years and these structures have been moving on each other for so many years so this is a very finely designed structure where there is hardly any friction see if there was friction they would have been creaking rubbing paining right from the beginning so these bone surfaces are actually covered with a very fine cartilage the friction between two ends of a bone is less than the friction if you move move an ice slab on another ice slab so that answers your question now and the cartilage which is there on the joint also is not a dead structure it's a dynamic structure it it keeps self repairing itself now, for some reason, if this cartilage gets damaged and doesn't self-repair, and then it wears off, then the underlying bone which it was covering gets exposed. And then that movement bone on bone becomes very painful. These small particles of cartilage which get separated into the joint, they have, as Dr. Dheeraj was mentioning uh, already inflammatory reaction, there is swelling in the knee. And this inflammatory reaction is always painful because there are, uh, you know, the anti-inflammatory enzymes which are liberated, they are painful. Uh, I mean, although their purpose is very uh, uh, honest and good for the body, but at the end of the day, that causes pain. So to cut the long story short, if the structure of the joint was to get damaged inside, if the friction in the cartilage was to become more by, by the way of loss of cartilage, or if, as we all know, that there's, the joint keeps self-lubricating itself. See, any, any mobile machine, there's a structure in the car, you put oil or in a scooter or in a cycle. So if you don't put it, the structures will rub against each other and get damaged. So you put oil. And here, nature is putting its own kind of special oil, which is liberated by what is known as a synovial membrane, or there's a fine layer around the joint, which keeps lubricating it. So for some reason, if this membrane was to get damaged, then also there will be inflammatory reaction, and then it will destroy the joint. Now, a special type of arthritis is what is known as an inflammatory type of arthritis, for example, rheumatoid or associated with some other diseases, specifically attaches this, uh, attacks the synovial membrane. And then it destroys it, not only destroys it, it forms an aggressive structure called tannus. And then that actually destroys the cartilage of the joint. And it becomes a vicious cycle. So cut the long story short, by the way of either the membrane that is covering the joints getting damaged by a disease or a cartilage getting damaged by aging process or some injury to the joint. If the joint got injured and it was not positioned precisely and there was irregularity and that, that was rubbing against each other. So any of these causes would cause joint pain. So I would actually divide joint pain into two types of major causes. One is a green flag joint pain, other is a red flag joint pain. Green flag joint pain is due to rubbing of the cartilage or joint cartilage damage, usually due to aging, in which there are other factors. Maybe there are some genetic factors. And if one is overweight, that doesn't help. Uh, not that the over Overweight is not the primary factor. I've seen 150 kilo man whose joint was looking like a 16 year old person's joint. So there are multiple factors. So this is the green flag arthritis, which is age related wear and tear. The red flag arthritis is arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis in which it aggressively destroys the joint. Not only does it destroy the joint, it also destroys other organs. So it's a, it's a systemic disease. Why it is called red flag is that if it is diagnosed early and the treatment is institution with special drugs which are available, the disease modifying drugs, you can actually control it or sometimes even eliminate it. And if it is not nipped in the bud, it can actually destroy the joint very badly. So the distinction between green flag and red flag arthritis is very important. And if there is continual pain, 
then you should see your orthopedic surgeon who will try and figure out whether it is the green flag or the red flag arthritis. And one more uh, caution, as Dheeraj was mentioning that sometimes the uric acid may be negative even though it is gout. Similarly, in rheumatoid arthritis, the blood test may be negative and it may be rheumatoid arthritis, especially in early disease. In the first year of rheumatoid arthritis, which is the critical time where you have to actually attack the disease, these factors may be negative, rheumatoid factor, anti-CC, etc. I won't want to go into the details. So it is more of a clinical diagnosis that small joints getting affected, big stiffness in the morning, stiffness which does not dissolve, takes very long time to resolve compared to the age-related arthritis where the stiffness gets resolved quickly in the morning. So there are some parameters where one can make a distinction between the two. Why I'm spending more time on this is because this is the critical part of treating joint pain. First critical point is to distinguish between this green flag and red flag arthritis. Once we do that, then we can formulate the strategy. Wonderful, wonderful. So, so the cartilage covering the joint and the synovial membrane, which provides lubrication are the two important uh, structures that we need to look into. And of course, the red flag and the green flag uh, arthritis. So interestingly put. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Gulati. So the next question automatically is, uh, what should we do to prevent the joint pains? Mm -hmm. See, I, I also appreciate that there may be some audience who uh, speak more Hindi and uh, less of this foreign language. So right. I'll try and mix the two. And in fact, I'll just in two lines summarize what I said uh, in, in English before. Ki jo jodon ka dard hai, humare jodon ke oopar bhoot maheen tarah ki cartilage lagi hoti hai, jis ki wajah se friction kam hoti hai. Aur iske andar ek jhili hoti hai, jo humare jodon ke andar एक स्पेशल तरह का फ्लूइड डालती रहती है जिससे वो जोड़ में घृषण या फ्रिक्शन कम होता है तो किसी वजह से अगर ये दोनों डैमेज हो जाते हैं तो जोड़ों में दर्द होता है जोड़ों के दर्द को ये जानना जरूरी है कि क्या ये गठिया आप पूछ रहे थे किसी भी जोड़ दर्द को लोग गठिया कहते हैं कि क्या ये उस प्रकार का गठिया है जो जैसे रूमेटॉइड आर्थराइटिस है जिसको मैं लाल झंडी वाला जठिया गठिया कहता हूं या जो हरे झंडी वाला या ग्रीन फ्लैग गठिया है जो उम्र के साथ होता है तो कई तरह के टेस्ट हैं आपके डॉक्टर देख के आपका इससे निदान कर सकते हैं और जो ये रूमेटॉइड आर्थराइटिस जब जो लाल झंडी वाला जो गठिया है इसका इलाज जल्दी से जल्दी शुरू हो जाना चाहिए ब्लड टेस्ट चाहे नहीं भी पॉजिटिव हो तो भी अगर जो हमारा जो डायग्नोसिस है आपको देख रहे कहते हैं पुराने जमाने में लोग हकीम नब्ज देख के जान जाते थे तो ये वही नब्ज वाला स्टेज पे ही इसका ट्रीटमेंट शुरू हो जाना चाहिए तो अब आपका जो प्रश्न है कि इस जोर दर से कैसा बचा जाए हाउ डू वी यू नो प्रिवेंट ज्वाइंट पेन सी इफ ज्वाइंट पेन इज टू हैपन विद एज देर आर सम जेनेटिक फैक्टर्स कार्टिलेज इज गोट टू डी जनरेट इन सम नॉट इन अदर्स आई हैव सीन 90, 95 year old people with absolutely normal looking joint. I have seen 150 kilo man with normal looking joint, and I have seen a 50, 40, 55 kilo lady with a very badly affected age related joint. So there are some genetic factors which are not under our control. So that we can't help if well, if it is written on on a gene that something is going to happen, then it's going to happen. So what we can do is we can see just say. एक घर बनाए उसकी दीवारें हैं तो दीवारों का अगर आप पिलर भी स्ट्रॉन्ग रखेंगे तो छत आपकी बची रहेगी तो हमारे जोड़ का जो पिलर है द पिलर ऑफ द वॉल्स ऑफ आवर जॉइंट्स इज द मसल्स सो इफ वी कैन कीप दिस मसल स्ट्रॉन्ग हम अपनी मांसपेशियों को सुदृढ़ रखेंगे तो जो जोर जो जोर पूरा जोर के अंदर आना है द प्रेशर विच इज गोइंग टू कम ऑन वॉकिंग और वर्किंग वाइल वी आर डूइंग थिंग्स विच इज गोइंग टू ट्रांसमिट टू The the joint will be partially taken up by the muscles, है ना आधा मसल जोड़ ले लेंगे आधा अब मैं इसका उदाहरण आपको देता हूँ दिस एग्जाम्पल की जो आपने देखा होगा the soccer player, they keeping keep hitting the head with the uh, you know the ball with the head. अगर if they were hitting the ball so hard, you know they would have damage to the their vertebrae. But that doesn't happen. Why? Look at this guy's neck. Their muscles are so strong. because most of that load is taken by the muscles they don't let it get transmitted to the bone and the discs so that is the secret so you have to keep your muscles strong in lower limb joints apni 
उस जोड़ के आसपास की मसल को स्ट्रॉन्ग रखना है फॉर एग्जाम्पल नी और हिप एंड नॉट ओनली दैट दीज मसल आर लाइक ए चेन स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द बैक डाउन टू द लेग्स so you, not only have you you have not only have you got to strengthen your lower limb muscles or upper limb muscles but also the back and abdominal muscles because they act as chain so we want all these shock of walking jumping running to be largely absorbed by the muscles and less to be transmitted to the joints so that is the secret joint exercise keeping your muscles strong but you don't have to go mad lifting heavy weights everything has to be in physiological limit so keep the muscles strong keep the joints mobile apni exercise yoga karte rahe ki jitna aap exercise yoga karenge utni hi aapki muscles strong hongi utni aapki cartilage regenerate hogi so, and of course try not to put on weight that is the most important thing because main example deta hu ek ghoda hai uske upar aap 100 kg ka wazan dale aur usi ghode pe 50 kg ka wazan dale तो कब वो ज्यादा तेज भागेगा और कितनी कौन ज्यादा देर चलेगा जिसपे कम वजन था तो एक द फिजियोलॉजिकल वेट तो चाहिए लेकिन अगर ओवर वेट हो रहा है तो हमारे डायटिशियन है मिस वर्मा शी कैन आल्सो टेल अस कि हाउ वी कैन रिड्यूस वेट सो दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो ऑल दीज आर मल्टी फैक्टोरियल थिंग्स सो इफ यू कैन कीप आर सेल्स हेल्थी एंड नाउ देर आर सम मेडिसिन विच आर कार्टिलेज एनहेंसिंग मेडिसिन इन द अर्ली स्टेज दे मे और मे नॉट वर्क आई एम नॉट वेरी श्योर but if at all they work they work in early stages and then there are some lubricant injections again they might work only in early stage not in late stages okay so dr yash bhati this is so wonderful uh, of course exercising and keeping our muscles strong is the key uh, to save us and prevent the future uh, joint damage so exactly uh, some of our viewers are asking how do we actually treat uh the joint pains is there a particular method of doing it sequence and what do we do actually what do doctors do to yeah. treat See, the joint pains bilkul yes. that's that's a logical question again is prashn ka uttar we will start right from the beginning what i said number one we have to diagnose what type of arthritis what type of arthritis are we dealing with see are we dealing with that green flag arthritis or red flag arthritis and if you are dealing with the red flag arthritis the treatment has to be very very prompt and very very aggressive right in the beginning so there are some special drugs which are available which your orthopedic surgeon or a rheumatologist can guide you and you must take that and nip that disease in the bud and of course there are some anti inflammatory drugs there are some supportive braces some knee cap things like that and physiotherapy exercises strengthening the muscles some cartilage enhancing medicines in some situations all these things can be done and of course as i said weight reduction keeping yourself mobile you know all these things are extremely important in the early stage and you already talked about preventing then will come the stage when it has gone beyond the stage of prevention it has gone beyond the stage of Uh, anti-inflammatory other drugs physiotherapy and it has got to what is known as an end stage arthritis that it is it's like a road which is you know if there is you know if you have a motorway or a national road which is very finely made and there are always when you know traffic is moving there there will be some ditches which form so there are few ditches you come and fill and you know put something and you repair it and then you keep repairing keep repairing but then a day comes when the whole road gets totally destroyed and it's not possible to partially repair then you have to put a new layer on that so you have to relay that road so this is exactly what is uh, done in joints when when the stage comes at to that stage that the whole joint has got irreparably damaged ki bahut zyada kharab ho gaya ki ab dawaiyon se theek nahi ho sakta hai sab kuch aapne kar liya dawaiyan bhi le li exercise bhi kar liya yoga bhi kar liya wazan bhi kam kar liya phir bhi dard hoti hai raat ko bhi dard hoti hai chalna dubar ho gaya problem ho gayi aur pain killer khane pad rahe hain zyada pain killer khane se kidney damage ho jayegi to ye sab jab ye stage aa jati hai to jaise agar sadak puri toot gayi hai to sadak ke upar nayi layer lagani hai the same way we do what is known as a joint replacement now there is a misunderstanding about joint replacement people think we cut the joint and put a new joint that's not true you you're not cutting away the bone whole of the bone and putting a new all that is being done is that we are just reshaping that 
joint surface and putting a new surface artificial surface on that so is actually the term should be joint resurfacing rather than a replacement so th that is what is done and then of course a uh, different type of joints are available there are many criteria when to do it in young old middle age or fat not fat this i think you can leave that to your orthopedic surgeon suffice it to say that if joint is irreparably damaged right. especially in elderly and many times in younger also now because previously we did not use to do it in younger people but you can't leave a young person uh, in pain forever so many criteria you leave that criteria to your surgeon the joint replacement or resurfacing can be done the many joints can be changed but the most commonly done are the knee joint and the hip joint and uh, we can also go into the detail of uh, how we do it and when we do fully and when we do partially if you the time yes, permits yes. So, we like, uh, yes dr gulati that is very interesting because uh, you are one of the very few surgeons performing half knee replacement so it's it's really interesting what what is this half knee replacement yeah you see now as you know knee replacement or knee resurfacing is a very very common operation and a very successful operation many time people say oh our ex prime minister Bajpayee ji got it done and he did not do well. See, there were many factors responsible at that time. I will not go into those factors. Now this surgery has come off age. There are is very well controlled thing and the results are truly miraculous. And there are patients who could not walk earlier and walking now. Important thing is that this surgery should be done only, only and only when it is really really required. सी अगर प्रॉब्लम इतनी ज्यादा है और आप सर्जरी करके वहां पे इतना रिड्यूस कर देते हो पेशेंट विल ब्लेस यू अब इतनी इस प्रॉब्लम के लिए आपने सर्जरी कर दी पीपल विल नॉट अप्रिसिएट दे थिंक कि क्यों ये ऑपरेशन मेरा किया गया सो द चॉइस ऑफ पेशेंट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो देर आर मिलियंस ऑफ नी रिप्लेसमेंट बींग डन ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड इवन इन आर कंट्री इट गोज इन टू हंड्रेड एंड न्यूअर थिंग इज दैट About 30% of patient, 30 प्रतिशत वो लोग जिनका पूरा नी चेंज किया जा रहा है या पूरे नी की रिसर्फिंग की जा रही है उनको इसकी पूरा नी बदलने की जरूरत नहीं है वी डोंट रियली नीड टू डू फुल नी रिप्लेसमेंट बिकॉज उसमें जो खराब है ज्वाइंट का पोर्शन वो सिर्फ आधा है ओनली पार्शल द नीज पार्शली डैमेज रेस्ट ऑफ द ज्वाइंट इज ओके सो देर आर मेनी क्राइटेरिया बाई विच यू कैन डिटर्मिन बाई उनके एक्सरे देख के और अदर टेस्ट करके क्लिनिकली हम ये बता सकते हैं कि इस रोगी में पूरा ज्वाइंट खराब नहीं है तो जब पूरा खराब नहीं है भाई आपकी एक दीवार खराब है तो आप पूरा घर गिरा के क्यों नया घर बनाओगे सिंपल सी बात है है ना एक कोई डैमेज है तो उसकी सपोर्ट लगा देंगे सो देर आर क्राइटेरिया if there is a partial damage to the knee then we do what is known as a partial knee replacement and the results are truly wonderful the after that the the way patients walk the, you, you can't make out within one or two days people are walking and the, the there is a very natural walk because we don't cut many muscles you don't damage any structure you just go through a small incision change only that part and the result it's like a no, almost a normal knee you can even do light sports with that you can sit cross legged on the floor so i, I say it with a response with responsibility that 30% of patient who are getting total knee replacement done today don't need total knee they need what is known as a partial knee replacement and ye main apna nahi keh raha hu ye ab england mein bhi yahi trend hai kyunki ye wala jo knee hai ye england mein start hua tha aur england mein bhi ab 25 se 30 pratishat jin logon ko pura knee badla ja raha tha unka ab sirf partial ya half knee badla jata hai to ye koi meri ijaz nahi hai ye scientific baat main kar raha hu hamare desh mein इस चीज की अवेयरनेस लानी जरूरी है कि देर इज अ थिंग कॉल्ड हाफ नी एंड इज रिजल्ट आर एक्चुअली बेटर देन टोटली wonderful wonderful doctor gulati and uh, thank you thank you so much for sharing your experience and uh, invaluable advice that we have done this surgery for a very 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 senior leader of our country wonderful. and uh, you might have seen him running around uh, throughout these up elections and uh, within 2 months he ran, ran the whole campaign 
wonderful wow i can't obviously name <laughs> I'm him i'm sure i'm sure so uh, 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 our attendees and uh, we also have benefited with better understanding of the what why and how of the joint pain and uh, we know that this better understanding will remove many misconceptions and anxieties so we will invite live questions uh, from our audience at the end of our discussion and uh, we really look forward to further advice from you dr gulati so thank you so much sure, you. and uh, yes so uh, off to uh, uh, the nutrition part so diet exercise de stressing and other healthy lifestyle measures have very significant impact on our well being so let's first see how diet impacts our bone health so i am very pleased to now introduce our next panelist dr deepthi verma who with over 25 years in the field of nutrition and dietetics currently heads nutrition at vlcc's skill development she has been a lecturer a medical nutrition consultant writer and editor and has been felicitated with several awards for her contribution to nutrition including a lifetime achievement award in september 2019 wonderful welcome to the webinar dr deepthi and uh, such a pleasure to have you thank you so much dr anju it's such a pleasure to be in the same breath as you uh, dr gulati and dr bhatia thank you so much wonderful so uh, there goes the question uh, the, which foods help to strengthen the skeletal system in our body yes so very important so first thing i think dr gulati and dr bhatia both have re- i would like to reiterate the same is uh, if you're overweight or obese you know please please lose your weight and bring it down so weight reduction is very very important when it comes to a great bone health and such a wonderful example dr gulati gave of the horse there you know so um that is the most important thing yes and now coming to the nutrients and the foods that one should have very important as you had mentioned earlier that uh, 90% plus part of our bone structure skeletal structure is composed of calcium so calcium actually becomes a very important nutrient so hence you know like but it is these days seen that it's not so much about the calcium because uh, inherently indian diets are good in calcium you know we all consume pulses legumes nuts and uh, green leafy vegetables and cruciferous vegetables all of us like on a daily basis and of course the dairy so a uh, calcium is not as big an issue as is vitamin d3 which is actually gradually going down and of the reports i've seen in the last 5 years of the patients i have not yet to see a normal level of vitamin d3 in any of the reports so yes i mean like vitamin d is also present in certain foods like ragi in fact it's present almost in all the millets uh it's present in uh dairy milk and um it's also present in some other you know leafy vegetables so but then the issue is that vitamin d2 is what is present in the um plant based diets so but what our body needs is vitamin d3 so that d2 definitely gets absorbed from the intestines and goes to the liver and there it converts you know in a more available form but eventually the conversion happens in the kidneys and that is where all the vitamin d2 which is the hydroxy ergo call calciferol converts into d3 the active form of vitamin d3 which once converted into d3 is known as a hormone called calcitriol and this is majorly responsible for handling the calcium levels in the body and mineralization and demineralization of the bones and this calcitriol or active form of vitamin d3 is also responsible for the release of parathyroid hormone which releases from our throat area uh, which manages the calcium levels in the body so yes vitamin d3 you know like even if one needs to take the supplements is very important uh, but always to have an optimized level of vitamin d3 another nutrient very very important is vitamin a so vitamin a is very important for the regulation of the calcium and d3 levels both and uh, vitamin a is present in everything all the plant based things that we see around us because it's present in everything which is green red red yellow and orange fruits and vegetables so there's so many green red yellow and orange fruits and vegetables that are around these days is the season of mangoes and uh, of course like melons so we can actually consume them a lot because that's also alkalizing our body so yes vitamin a and then zinc of course which is present in uh, 
uh, you know, like legumes and uh, pulses and nuts and seeds. So very important to be consumed as well. So primarily these, and there is one which we all know, anti-inflammatory uh, omega-3 fatty acids, uh, which we will need to take deliberately because that's not so much part of a normal everyday diet. So uh, omega-3 is present, of course, we all know it is present in fish oil. It is also present in walnuts and Brazil nuts. So the kind of omega-3 which is present in Brazil nuts and walnuts is actually DHA and EPA, which is docosahexaenoic acid and eicosapentaenoic acid. So that is what we need to consume. So in case we've been having, you know, like joint pains and stuff for a while, it's very important to consume at least about two walnuts on a daily basis. So primarily in a nutshell, I would say that these are the foods. And as Dr. Bhatia also added, to go a little low on simple carbohydrates, you know, because this is something which we are overindulging in and which is also giving rise to insulin insensitivity, which eventually converts into DM2 or diabetes type 2. And, uh, you know, like hyperinsulinemia is the condition that happens when we uh, keep consuming, you know, these um, uh, rusk uh, along with our chai and coffee and uh, biscuits, which are present in every normal household, uh, you know, and of course, so much of naan and kulcha and the white bread, you know, which we make a sandwich with. So these foods are becoming so much popular along with that added sugar or the white crystalline sugar that we overly use. And which actually, you know, like behaves like very, very inflammatory foods for our body. So all this, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Doctor Deepthi, yes, that was uh, uh, such a uh, great insight. And also, uh, I we would really like you to tell us about uh, some food articles, uh, especially because Dr. Bhatia talked about gout and so also Dr. Yes, there are certain food articles which we need to avoid or we need to take uh, when we have gout. So would you, would you please tell us about that? Yeah, so basically high purine foods, definitely, you know, they are all the seafood that we get, uh, you know, the marine aquatic animals that we normally consume, especially in the coastal areas and even otherwise, and all the meat braised, which is chicken and mutton, which are very, very popular, of course, in India and uh, the dairy. So these are very, very high purine foods, definitely. And uh, of course, like these days is a culture where everybody wants to consume a very high protein diet because for some reason, somebody's told them that, you know, like go low on carbohydrate and increase your protein if you want to lose weight or if you want to make muscles. Whereas uh, the government is constantly telling us, you know, the NIN, which is National Institute of Nutrition and ICMR, which is the Indian Council of Medical Research, you know, we, we have a constant reduction in the RDA, which is the recommended allowances for protein coming down. I, you know, when I was studying way back in the late 80s, uh, when I was doing my master's, you know, we would actually give 1.1 grams of protein per kg IBW, which has now come down to 0.75 as per the norms, recommended norms. So that's only because, you know, we actually in India overindulge in protein and it's such a big hype to be consuming so much of high protein diet because of which, you know, of course, like we have metabolic byproducts as, um, uh, you know, ammonia. Ammonia converts into urea, of course, and then we have uric acid and creatinine as well. So that further burdens the kidneys other than all the toxicity that we accumulate in our body as well you know, other than consuming protein. So our kidneys are the most burdened organs and most of the, you know, like as, uh, um, you know, our co-panelists have mentioned that actually kidneys need to be a little easier. You know, that's where we excrete all this from and half of the metabolism actually happens and get monitored through the kidneys. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. So, yeah, these are the foods we would need to. Instead, we'll include berries and fruits and vegetables. That's what alkalinizes the body as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Deepthi. Uh, it was really wonderful. And uh, going forward, uh, not only nutrition, like Dr. Yash Kulati said, the exercise and uh, muscles, they are the pillars of the body and they need to be strengthened to have a good joint health. So basically, just to touch upon a few points in exercise, just avoid being sedentary. So the Going says if you if you don't use it you lose it you lose up to two percent of your bone and two percent of your muscle every year if you're not uh, exercising or if you're not active so break away from sitting because sitting is uh, linked to high risk of obesity heart disease diabetes even types of cancer so if you're overweight lose weight 
right exercise that reduce the loads on the joints, a good balance of aerobic, muscle strengthening and flexibility exercise, along with keeping a healthy weight is the basis of good joint uh, health. Strengthening exercises, like Dr. Gulati said, your core muscles, tummy, sides, back, hips, thighs, these are the core muscles. They positively affect your posture. They need to also, they need also to be strengthened. Um, of course, aerobic activity, uh, walking, jogging, swimming, cycling, dancing, playing, sports, etc. Everything is good, which increases your heart rate, uses your large muscle. But if you need to, uh, you know, take care of your joints and you already have a problem, you need to look into the low impact exercises like cycling, walking and swimming. In fact, uh, you know, swimming is uh, cycling and swimming swimming in fact relieves the pressure on your joints because the water is buoyant and it's a very good way of relieving stress on the joints gym equipment with low impact loads uh, like elliptical stair climber or stationary cycle is also good strengthening exercises to build muscle now ladies they get scared you know that we will build muscles like men but that not that does not happen because of our hormones so just get going strengthen your muscles at home you can use dumbbells resistance tubing in gym choose your weight machines free weights and even if you're not a weight person, you can do exercises without weight, using your own body as resistance, do crunches, lunges, squats, planks, arms and legs strengthening. In fact, like Dr. Gulati said, yoga, Tai Chi, Pilates, they all keep our joints ready for intense exercise, stretching exercises, which is the mainstay to keep the bones and joints healthy. So let's see if we have uh, some questions from our attendees uh, addressed to our panel. Um, so there goes uh, Dr. Gulati, there is one question that uh, when we have deficiency like vitamin D3 and uh, calcium, uh, do we go straight away for injectables? Do, do we, because many people just go, injection, you know, so what do you have to say about that? I mean, absolutely not. Uh, one should never take vitamin D injection. They're absolutely not required. The oral Vitamin D is as effective as injectable vitamin D. Oral vitamin D can hardly ever cause toxicity. Injectable vitamin D can cause very severe toxicity. Injectable vitamin D can cause, they said, oil depot preparation. It can cause a lot of pain and inflammation in the <clears throat> buttock where it is given. So absolutely not. I don't use this at all in my practice, whereas still, unfortunately, Many people use it. The only place when I use it is when a person has malabsorption syndrome or a problem in oral absorption of the oral preparation. Those are exceptional circumstances. In those cases, you may have to use injectable uh, vitamin D. Otherwise, absolutely not. Wonderful. So there goes the answer. Uh, try to have it orally and... Uh avoid as much as possible unless really required to go in for injectables. So, uh, Dr. Gulati, uh, uh, there is also a question uh, like uh, somebody says that uh, she had uh, severe joint pains and uh, the knee and uh, uh, the doctor, uh, uh, she's been advised to take uh, injection of steroid and uh, local anesthetic. So, uh, how what is the indication for those injections in any any joint which... which See, generally speaking, bad. steroids unfortunately have a bad press. But let's remember, steroid actually is a wonderful drug if it is used properly. It's like a genie in the bottle. It depends how you use that genie. You use the genie to destroy yourself or you use it for your benefit. So steroids sometimes can be life-saving. So let's not give it a bad press unless it is misused. So... In the scenario of joint pains, if a person is kind of borderline, you know, is neither here nor there, that I feel, oh, no, no, it's not bad enough for surgery, you know, and uh, is not good enough to be left alone, 
and you have tried all oral medication, you have tried physiotherapy and still there is inflammation, a steroid injection can actually buy you a few weeks or months. Also, there are other types of injections available. One is a visco supplementation, which can be done in dry joints. I mean, when there is already swelling, there's no point giving. So that might also buy you some time. And then there are injections like what is known as PRP. Sometimes some people call it a stem cell and all that. Uh, too much uh, press is given to that. Uh, what, what we do is we take out the blood, concentrate and con uh, inject the concentrated platelet into the joint and we hope that it will try and regenerate the cartilage. So there is indication for all of these, but let me just say that these are time buying things. When you think that really speaking, joint replacement is not on right now, or for example, in very elderly person who says, Ki mujhe jor nahi badalwana apna. Kya kuch bhi ho jai. So then to give relief, these can give relief. So one has to use them judicially, but don't say no, no to this always. But one has to be judicious about it. Okay, that's that's really wonderful. Doctor, there is another question. And uh, so it said that uh, uh, some supplements are all, always given uh, whenever we talk about joints. And that is like glucosamine and chondritin supplements. So what is the role of these supplements? Uh, like? Well, you know, that is what I said in the beginning also. There is too much of press uh, you know, too much of a publicity given to these things. And it's a multi-million dollar industry. And uh, you see, there are situations when there's nothing you can do. I mean, the, somebody, 45, 50 year old person comes and there is pain, there is wear and tear. It's very frustrating when the person says, Ki, get rid of my pain. And I tell them, look, there is a wear and tear, which is age related. I cannot wish it away. You have to control it with some type of medication, exercise, physiotherapy, and they think they have wasted their money by coming to me. So many times people in those circumstances would resort to things like glucosamine, chondritin sulfate, see, and say, okay, doctor has given something. The so doctor feels I've given something, patient thinks doctor has given me something. So, you know, that's fine. Also, these have some little anti-inflammatory property. So that can also help. And in very early disease, when it is only confined to cartilage not being fully damaged, there is a possibility that this might work in the early disease. But certainly, these will not work in the late disease. Say in grade four type of joint destruction, there's no point wasting your money in this. So you have to be, again, judicious about giving these. And I've seen people taking for years and years. At least I don't use it for years. I don't want to waste people's money. Question from a dancer, Bhagishri from Kolapure. She says, what uh, would you suggest for dancers to keep joints healthy? Same. Dancers are also same human being like all of us. Right. Of course, you have much right. better fine looking and well balanced and well shaped people, but joints are the same. Right. So you follow all the same things. And also, more important thing is don't dance on hard surfaces. You should be dancing on a floor, uh, which is made of wood, so that the shock absorption occurs better. That I've, I've told so many dance teachers that try not to teach your pupils on hard concrete uh, floors, especially some of the Indian dances, there's a lot of jumping and, you know, so those things and some of the dance, very prominent dance teachers have actually taken the advice and uh, change to wooden floors. Similarly, for example, playing badminton is better not to play on concrete yes, and better to have wooden this thing. So thank you, you have to be careful. Thank you so much, doctor. Uh, so I think we had a wonderful session. Thank you. Thank you for attending our webinar and guiding our conversations with your wonderful questions. And thank you so much, our panelists, Dr. Kashkulati, Dr. Bhatia, and Dr. Deepthi for all our learnings today and so in the end wish you all a very healthy life filled with happiness and fulfillment and a very good day to you thank you thank you so thank much. you very much thank, thank you. you so thank much you. Bye. thank you thank you everybody.